Okay, so I am back and we are gonna be talking about light and energy and light therapy. The electromagnetic spectrum is also known as the electric spectrum of radiation. It's given to all forms of energy or radiation that exists um, in the form of light or specific waves, such as radio waves used by TVs, microwaves that we use to cook. Um, energy moves through space on waves. These waves are similar to the waves caused when a stone is dipped on the surface of water. So if you think about it, if you throw a huge stone, it's going to cause a bigger ripple. If you throw small stones, it'll cause quick um, ripples. Each type of energy has its own wavelength. The distance between successive peaks, so if there's one wave, that bell shape, that's a peak. There's another one, that's a peak there. You measure it, um, the distance between the two, and that tells you what rate you're going at. So a radio has a big one. Your gamma rays are like peak, 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 and there's like these really short distances between your gammas, but your radio waves have a huge distance. That's how you'll classify them. Some are long and some are short. Long wavelengths compared with short wavelengths. Um, long wavelengths have low frequency, meaning the number of waves is less frequent, fewer waves within a waveform pattern. Short wavelengths have a higher frequency because the number of waves is more frequent within the waveform pattern. Um, you also want to know that electric lighting in the salon is not a form of light therapy, but your lights in your salon determine so much. Please take a look at the picture that will tell you um, what hair color. Hair color in one light will look drastically different in another light, the reason being the cast of the light. So when you have a ring light, I'll actually show you guys an example. If I take this ring light and I switch, I go from this nice um, balanced white light to nothing. Oh, that's just, I use this and I'll go to a sepia. My skin looks jaundice. Uh, my hair looks a little bit more brassy. If I go to blue, my hair looks super dark, doesn't look red at all. My skin looks like glowing. But if I go back to white, it shows you how everything is naturally. That's the power of lighting in a salon. This will affect your photographs. And that's why I always recommend for good business skills when you open your own salon, get a background that is pure white, get one area in the salon and invest in a ring light you can even make your own if you can do it correctly, where you can get a pure light source to give clients an idea of what their hair is like. A lot of um, color competitions or styling competitions will not let you enter your work as a valid entry unless you have this white background and a ring light because it gives you an accurate depiction. Natural light, that was the old theory before that if you're outside, natural light's the best, but technically that's not true because out in natural light, it does give you an idea of what it looks like, but in the salon, it will show you something different. So what people were doing is they were getting a picture outside and a picture inside and comparing the two. Some colors like a brown that has purple in it may look really dark inside. Um, you go outside, it's like vibrantly purple. Your reds are the worst with that because they look very different. Like if I get closer, you can see that my red is actually pretty vibrant. Um, doesn't always show up here. But if I go outside in the sunlight, it'll like really come to life. That's something to be uh, very mindful of, especially if you're a colorist out there. Um, know that uh, when you're handling bulbs, bulbs also have hazards, not only a burn hazard, but an electrical hazard, and fluorescent bulbs contain daydream substances, including mercury. Should you break a light bulb, you wanna do your research on how to clean it up. There's been a lot of um, discrepancies and you know, some people telling you to vacuum it, but what that can do is aerosol the mercury. So it's very important um, to get the correct salon lights. They do make specialized lights, I think, for hair color. Those are a really good investment to have. Um, okay, so with this little chart to compare, I'm going to reiterate this again. Your long wavelengths are low frequency, have deeper penetration, and they have less energy. Your shorter wavelengths have high frequency, less penetration, and more energy. Your shorter wavelengths also can cause more harm. So for example, overexposure to x-rays is toxic to the body, and gamma rays, it's like drinking radiation. You do not want to be exposed to gamma rays because that can actually kill you and cause a punishment almost worse than death. Look up the case of the man whose DNA melted if you don't have a weak stomach, and that gives you an idea of how powerful radiation can be. So your visible spectrum of light, this is the part, the only part of the electromagnetic spectrum that we can see. It makes up only 35% of natural sunlight. So what we see right now, how I'm looking at this camera, how I can see myself, how you can see me, is only 35% of what's out there in the natural world and know that some animals can see part of the visible light spectrum that humans cannot. So a lot of insects like honeybees can see ultraviolet light. Um, some animals like, uh, I think it's cuttlefish, they can see like more light than we ever can imagine. And it's hard to like, kind of describe it that way. I don't know how they figured that out, but like there's colors that technically don't exist because we can't perceive them, but this animal is able to perceive them. It's just really interesting. 
Um, the wavelengths of infrared light is just below that of red light, and the wavelength of ultraviolet light is just above that of violet light. And that's why we can't see them. They're often referred to as light. The infrared light and ultraviolet light are not really light. Ultraviolet light and infrared light um, are forms of electromagnetic energy, but are invisible because their wavelengths are beyond the visible spectrum of light. Invisible light makes up 65% of natural sunlight. Um, the wavelength of light that we can see is also known as um, Roy G. Biv. So it's red, orange, yellow, green, um, blue, indigo, and violet. That's what we can perceive as color. And some people are also colorblind. That's a genetic condition. Invisible light is the light at either end of the visible spectrum, light that is invisible to the naked eye. Before visible violet light of the spectrum is ultraviolet light, and it's the shortest and least penetrating light of the spectrum. Beyond visible red light of the spectrum is infrared light, which produces heat. Um, natural sunlight is made up of three types of light. Visible light, 35%, invisible infrared light, 60%, and invisible ultraviolet light, 5%. Um, read this box. If light from the sun is passed through a glass prism, usually a glass plastic prism that resembles a pyramid, it will appear in seven different colors known as the rainbow, displayed in the following manner, violet, indigo, blue, green, yellow, orange, and red. These colors, which are visible to the naked eye, constitute visible light. Ultraviolet light is gonna be abbreviated UV and is also known as cold light or actinic light. It is invisible light that has shorter wavelengths, giving it higher energy and is less penetrating than visible light, causes chemical reactions to happen more quickly than visible light, produces less heat than visible light, and kills some germs. Um, UV light also prompts the skin to produce vitamin D, a fat-soluble vitamin that is good for bones and health. Um, we need sunlight to survive, but overexposure to UV light can cause aging and cancer. Um, skin cancer has reached a near epidemic with 1 million new cases being diagnosed each year. One in five Americans will develop skin cancer and 90% of those cancers will be the result of exposure from UV radiation from the sun, sun lamps, or tanning beds. And there's three types of UV lights. Ultraviolet A, your UVA lights, which is the longest wavelength. Um, it penetrates directly into the dermis of the skin, damaging collagen and elastin. Think of UVA as aging, the A is aging. UVB light, ultraviolet B. It's often called the burning because it causes sunburns. Both UVA and UVB causes skin cancer. Ultraviolet C, UVC, is blocked by the ozone layer on Earth. If Earth loses a protective layer of ozone, life will no longer exist as we know it. We do not want to deplete the ozone layer because it protects us from UVC radiation. So we need to have a delicate balance with skin. So know that it's important um, to go outside, expose yourself to the sun in a controlled amount because you need that vitamin D. It's really good for your body and your immune system, but too much um, of a good thing is bad. So for example, tanned. When people want a tanned look, what they are thinking of is actually controlled damage. Tanning is bad for you no matter how good it looks. It's actually a controlled burn. There's actually um, one of those cartoons that people are drawing tanning beds and shaping them like coffins because that's what they are. You're not only aging your skin, but you're putting yourself at risk. Look up the tan mom. She's actually from my state of Jersey and she looks like a leather handbag because she's tanned so much. Your infrared light will have longer wavelengths, penetrates more deeply, and it has less energy, and it produces more heat than visible light. Infrared light makes up 60% of natural sunlight. You'll use your infrared lamps when you're causing a massage. So if you have a salon that's integrative and they have a spa, if you have an acupuncturist, they'll use the um, infrared light to cause heat and blood flow to the one area of the body. You can use it for a facial massage. You can use the infrared for a light treatment. You can also use infrared heat lamps. It's an old school way of heating up the hair when you're gonna um, condition the hair or do a scalp treatment. They would also use them back in the day to heat up um, foils and highlights. A lot of salons will have these old equipment from the 80s and 90s when they would have the um, infrared light machines. They use it to diminish signs of aging such as wrinkles or to heal wounds or to increase circulation. Um, know that the application of UV light can be beneficial but it must be done with the utmost care um, by a qualified professional because overexposure can lead to damaged skin and skin cancer. They now know that UV um, light can kill bacteria on the skin and help the body produce vitamin D. Dermatologists will use vitamin uh, not vitamin therapy, they'll use UV therapy in addition to drugs to treat um, acne because the light is really good at killing the bacteria that lives in the pores. 
Know that light therapy is also called phototherapy. It's the application of light rays to the skin for treatment of wrinkles, capillaries, pigmentation, or hair removal. So one thing is um, broken or dilated capillaries like spider veins, I have them right here. The only way to fix them is through laser or um, there's other medications that can inject to dissolve them. You wanna know that the wavelength of infrared light is way too long to be seen with the visible eye. And the other did you know box, um, NASA, 40 years ago, NASA found that LED improved uh, healing and growth of human tissues. These original studies have laid the foundation for the services we do now. So NASA does more than just go into the space. They actually do um, technology that can benefit us in the skincare sense. And it also helps them like, you know, sell their product. They'll say, oh, this is used by a NASA person. So um, for decades, they have known that light therapy is good, but the original techniques still have a place today because they've been proven so effective. Um, they even build upon them. One of the devices I'll be reviewing in a future video um, from Dr. Gross is actually the DRX um, Eye Care Pro Mask. This is an LED therapy light and it uses different wavelengths to hit different layers of the skin. That's a device that clients can actually use at home. A lot of this book is outdated because it talks about not being able to use this. You have to be a doctor to do this or get special training. The special training um, may be true, but you can actually get access to a lot of these now through um, different websites and additional training. Know that laser, because um, we're gonna be talking about lasers next, these are used for um, getting rid of hyperpigmentation, laser resurfacing, which melts off every imperfection you have and it looks incredible when it's done. Um, they also use it for hair removal. Laser stands for Light Amplification Stimulation Emission of Radiation. It is a medical device that uses electromagnetic radiation for hair removal and skin treatments. There's a whole different types of lasers. Um, all lasers work by the use of photothermalysis, and this is a process that turns light from the laser into heat. Um, depending on the intended use, the laser can remove blood vessels, um, kill hair follicles, remove tattoos, eliminate some wrinkles without destroying surrounding tissues, and lasers have been used in decades for a variety of procedures because they're a little bit um, non-invasive. They're not as invasive as cutting open the skin, skin to fix something or a facelift. You can laser resurface um, your lip wrinkles off. Lasers work by means of a medium um, that emits light when stimulated by a power source. So read that little section how it works. It's this really cool thing. It uses mirrors and it intensifies the light to be super strong and powerful. Most lasers are classified as a level two medical device or above, which means that estheticians must be working under the supervision of a quali qualified physician to operate the laser. They typically have extra training um, and they're called medical estheticians. Uh, know that um, the next type is gonna be called the LED, a light emitting diode. Your light emitting diode is a medical device used to reduce acne, increase skin circulation, and improve the collagen content in skin. The LED works by releasing light onto the skin to stimulate specific responses at precise depths of skin tissue. Each color of light will correspond to a different depth measured in one billionth of a meter, which are called nanometers in the tissue. The LED light color seeks a color in the skin tissue known as a chromophore. A chromophore is a color component within the skin such as blood or melanin. The term chromophore comes from the Greek term meaning chroma, which is called color. When the colored light reaches a specific depth in the tissue, it triggers a reaction such as stimulating circulation or killing bacteria. Make sure you become familiar with this chart right here. It tells you the color in nanometers. Blue light, which is 570 nanometers, that's going to kill acne and reduce bacteria. It's good for um, anti-acne. Great for your younger clients, teens, or adults that have acne. Red light, 640 nanometers. This is going to increase circulation, improve collagen and elastin production, and stimulate wound healing. Yellow light is 590 nanometers. It reduces swelling and inflammation, improves lymphatic flow, detoxifies, and increases circulation. You want to use a yellow light on someone who has rosacea or some kind of inflammatory condition. Green light reduces hyperpigmentation, reduces redness, calms, and soothing. So the combination of all these are really great. The green light is really good on someone who has a lot of sun damage or cumulative damage because you can slowly shrink away the um, damage done by the sun in addition to a nice exfoliating treatment like a mandelic acid peel or a salicylic acid peel. Um, depending on the type of equipment used, the LED can be blue, red, yellow, or green. Um, I display, explained all that. What's written here is the same in that green table. 
Um, blue light can also be used in medical procedures performed by physicians for precancerous lesions. That's how powerful this light therapy is. It can um, halt cancer before it becomes an issue. With all light therapies, it is important um, that you have viewed their client consultation for any con contraindications. Light therapy should not be performed on anyone who has light sensitivities, phytotoxic reactions, is taking antibiotics, and has cancer or epilepsy, is pregnant, or is under a physician's care for certain conditions. Um, if you're not sure when, if you can use it, you want to refer them. A huge issue um, when I say phytotoxic reaction, think about essential oils now people are using them. There was a mask, I forgot the name of it, it was called the unicorn mask, it got recalled because it used grapefruit oil. That oil is phytotoxic. When you put that oil on, on your face, that essential oil, and you go out in the bright sunlight, it makes your skin more prone to a sunburn. So what happens is you're going to shine this healing light, which is normally healing, it's going to react with that essential oil and cause a serious um, burn or a blistering reaction. So make sure you look up phytotoxicity and do additional research on essential oils before you use them in services. Lastly, um, Intense Pulse Light is a medical device that uses multiple colors and wavelengths, broad spectrum, of focus light to treat spider veins, hyperpigmentation, rosacea, redness, and wrinkles, enlarged hair follicles and pores, and excessive hair. As with most devices, multiple treatments are required. These treatments are provided only under the supervision of a qualified physician. Um, from dermatologists using UV therapy for treating psoriasis, to estheticians using blue light to treat acne, to surgeons using lasers for advanced surgery procedures, the power of light is here to stay. And that just you know puts things in perspective that the lines are becoming blurred to what we can and can't do when it comes to light therapy. Because as we have more research, we're able then to train people that, oh, you can use this without being an MD. Because none of us want to you know go to school to do this one um, procedure that we can do now because we have the theory, we have the experience, we can just add on to our current license. This is where it's getting really interesting how the laws are changing to actually help us make more money, but also keep us in a career that we love to be in. So make sure you do your research on the types of treatments out there. I know that when I got into skincare and I was doing the chemical peels, I'm like, oh, I can do lasers. I am going to try to learn more because there's another one called the Fibroblast or the Plasma Pen, which uses a special um, beam of light that you can do at home. It's really interesting stuff. There's just so many really um, great things. You always want to make sure that your state um, allows you to do this. Um, if it doesn't, you want to then go to another state and learn about it, and then it becomes a little more complicated about how you can transfer that over. Or on the flip side, you want to advocate so you can do this in your own state and make this more even across the board. So this is it for the um, base of electricity. I hope you get a better understanding of your products. This is also a great ending point because we are officially done with um, part two of the book and the next part is going to be part three which is going to be our hair care we're going to be talking about principles of hair design next then after scalp care hair cutting hair styling braiding and braiding extensions wigs chemical texture services and one of my favorite chapters hair coloring so we are almost halfway through the book so you know take a good break and then i'm going to be back on here to film part three for you guys